Right, this is my third time recording this video. I am really, really rusty. What is up guys? Welcome back today to another video. Now, first of all, if there are any of you who stuck around for a long time and haven't seen my videos and you're coming back to my videos, thank you so much and welcome back. You're one of the very few. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Today, I want to talk about a really, really interesting book, but first I need to address a small issue. If you've been watching my videos for a long time, you'd know, but if you're new, I'll say it. I have not uploaded a video on this channel for over one year. It's been a long while. I don't want to delve into the reason about why I wanted to do that, but uh, I had academics, I had studies, and I had to focus on that. But now everything is kind of mellowed out, it's relaxed, and I want to get back into the groove. So what better way to do that than with a book review? You see, in the time I was gone, I wasn't able to read a lot of books, but I did manage to read a few. And this book, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, was one of them. Now, there are a few things that led me to read this book and few things that interested me, the author Blake Crouch himself. So this is the cover of the book that I have, and I saw this cover online, but what caught my eye was, it says Exceptional by Andy Weir. Andy Weir says that this book is exceptional. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Andy Weir and not too much involved in the book community altogether, Andy Weir is an amazing, fantastic sci-fi author. I read two uh, of his books, which are my favorite sci-fi books to date. Uh, one of them is Project Hail Mary, which I have covered on this channel. You can go and check it out. The second one you probably would have heard of in the movie format, that's The Martian. The book by Andy Weir, The Martian, was adapted into a film uh, on the same name, starring Matt Damon, which was widely successful and reached a very large range of audiences that do not typically read the books and go to the movies more. So The Martian is a wonderful, fantastic film, and the original, uh, the book that it is adapted from was written by Andy Weir. Needless to say, he's an exceptional sci-fi author, and if he says that a book is exceptional, and that book is a sci-fi book that gets the gears turning in your mind, then you start thinking maybe this book has something crazy going on. So I got Dark Matter by Blake Crouch and I loved it so much, I went to buy another book by Blake Crouch that is Recursion and I love that as well. Maybe I'll cover that in a future video, we are yet to see, but today let's talk about Dark Matter. This is just a sort of discussion uh, based on the storyline and I'll try to keep it as spoiler free as possible, but I don't know how I'm gonna do that, so there will be spoilers and you've been warned. But let's start slowly. Let's start with the synopsis at the back of the book. Are you happy in your life? These are the last words Jason Dessen hears before the masked abductor knocks him unconscious. Before he awakes to find himself strapped to a gurney surrounded by strangers in hazmat suits. Before the man he's never met smiles down at him and says, Welcome back. In this world he's woken up to, Jason's life is not the one he knows. His wife is not his wife. His son was never born, and Jason is not an ordinary college professor. Is it this world or the other one that's the dream? The answer lies in a journey more wondrous and horrifying than anything Jason could have imagined. Now, given the nature of the book and its sci-fi um, storyline, it's really hard to try to give a synopsis at the back of the book without giving a spoiler. So if I had to discuss the story in a little more depth while keeping it spoiler free, I'll do that first and then we head on to the actual storyline. We have a main character, Jason Desson, who lives in a happy life with his wife and his son. The background of Jason and his wife is that Jason was an extreme physics enthusiast and his wife was involved in uh, the art business. She wanted to be an artist. Both of them gave up a life of fame and popularity and success to settle down, have a nice, happy life and have a son and they're happy, they're fulfilled. So what we see is Jason is reminiscing about all these days and what his life would have been had he not gone down the path of having a family and maybe continued his career in physics. And on the night of all of this reminiscing, he gets abducted, taken to a place, knocked unconscious, and then he wakes up in a world where he's confused. Everybody around him seems to know who he is, but he doesn't know any of them. He's never met them in his life. And the adventures of him figuring out what's going on and how to get back to his life, back to his wife, back to his son, that's what builds the story forward and that's why it's so gripping and an interesting tale. That was it for the spoiler-free summary, now let's delve a little deeper into the story. So our character, Jason, basically has been kidnapped and taken into a different world. Now he sees all these people who recognize him, but he doesn't know any of them. 
So the first thing he does is escape a containment facility in which he's being he held, runs over to what he thinks was his house, as it is, located in his own world. He goes there and sees it empty. There's no wife, there's no son. He has a cold, soulless, empty life. So he tracks down his wife, who has pursued her career in art and now has an art exhibition. He finds her and talks to her, realizes that he is in a version of his own reality where he and his wife had pursued their paths in whatever the fields they were interested in, had gone down the path of popularity, had not settled down to make a family together. He realizes that he has been shifted into a different reality. Now explaining the premise of this book gets a little difficult, but I will try my best. Obviously in written form, Blake Crouch does it a hundred times better, but today, right here, I'm gonna try and explain the different multiversal theory. The theory that this book is based upon is that at any instant, Suppose I raise my hand here and then I move it to the right. In a different reality, I decided to move it to the left. In a different reality, I decided to move it back, forward, up, down, you get the point. Anything that can happen, anything that is possible will happen in some reality or another. That's why at any moment, every single object, uh, non-living or living, even the smallest atom or molecule is creating an infinite amount of other realities where suppose it went to the right, in another reality it went to the left, in another, in another reality it went back. It's creating an infinite amount of realities where it's doing an infinite amount of different things and all those things are the things that can be done. Similarly, we see that every single person is also creating an infinite amount of realities at any point in time. So, the Jason who previously resided in this cold and soulless world had wondered what his life would be if he had continued to start a family with uh, his wife. For the sake of understanding, I'll call our main character Jason A and I'll call the other Jason, Jason B. So Jason B is the one who created a machine that allows him to traverse these infinite realities, pick and choose at will and enter into any one of them. He made this machine and traveled to a reality where he realized that a Jason, some Jason, had settled down with his family. And Jason B kidnapped that Jason, knocked him unconscious and swapped places with him. And that Jason who was kidnapped was our main character, Jason A. So Jason A was ripped out of his life with his wife and son and swapped places with Jason B into his cold soulless world while Jason B enjoys his happy family life. And yes, it starts getting more and more confusing, but I can assure you Blake Crouch has done a very good a job in explaining this in the most simplest terms possible. I might not be doing the best here. But nevertheless, now Jason knows what's going on. He needs to get back to his reality. But there is one more factor, one more issue. Jason B had a lot of material sufficient to travel uh, through the machine at free will, choose an, a large number of realities. Whereas our Jason, Jason A, has limited amount of those materials and he has to pick and choose his realities very carefully. So he goes through all different kinds of realities where his wife and child don't exist, where they are really, really sick, where they don't know who he is, all these different kinds of realities to try to get back to the life he loved. He slowly figures out how to run the machine. It responds to his feelings, his thoughts, his emotions, and he learns to steer it in the direction of where he wants to go. And when he actually gets back to his own world, we are hit with another plot twist. Now, Jason A is the one who is operating the machine, trying to get back to his life. At any moment inside the machine as well, every step he takes, there is a different reality Jason that took a different step. Suppose he had one of two realities to go to, door A or door B. So our Jason suppose went to door A, the other Jason would go to door B. So at any point, even within the machine, there are an infinite amount of Jason A's trying to get back to their own world. And all of them have an equal right to have their life back, to have their wife and their son back, because all of them are in essential the same person. They are all Jason A. They are an infinite amount of Jason A's who were ripped out from their own life by Jason B. So when our main character, Jason A, reaches his world, sees Jason B, slowly more and more Jasons keep coming and that will become an infinite loop. There are going to be an infinite amount of Jasons in the world and that's going to keep increasing forever. 
So the way he has to get his family back, how he deals with Jason B, how he deals with all the other Jasons who have an equal right. He can't even deny them the right to uh, his, his wife and his son because all of them are copies of him. So the whole plot makes you kind of think, it um, evokes your emotions, it makes you feel for every single Jason and you can feel the desperation in Jason A's voice, in his actions. I feel that the book has been written in a way that makes you want to go into Jason's body and understand how he feels and that's what Blake Crouch has done perfectly. Every single desperate moment, every single sad moment, you feel that along with Jason. The writing is very, very powerful and he's done a great job at writing the characters. All in all, Blake Crouch is an amazing sci-fi author and I would definitely recommend that you go ahead and try this book. Similarly, Blake Crouch has written many other books like the one I've read, Recursion, and along with that, I'm gonna probably read the Wayward Pine series. I think it's a set of two or three books. Uh, I'll probably read that in the future, who knows, but I will definitely come with a review for Recursion in the future as well. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you're new here, thank you for watching it till the end. And if you're an old viewer, I'm back and I'm going to try and upload more and more regularly. Sorry if I was a little rusty in this video. Sorry if I wasn't able to pitch all my ideas perfectly. If I wasn't able to enunciate things perfectly, I'm still a little rusty trying to get back into the motions back into the groove and I'll try my best to improve from here. Even if there are 10 to 15 people who watch the video, there are 10 to 15 people who are seeing what I'm speaking, who are finding it interesting to watch the video, to click on the video. I'm just putting out what I love doing, what I love reading and I'm putting it out on the internet and I'm just hoping that I get some like-minded people who also like reading as well. On that note, if you did enjoy the video, subscribing doesn't hurt anybody. And if you don't want to subscribe, leave a like and you'll be an absolute gem if you can do both. Thank you so much for watching this video and I am going to see you next time. I have not said that line for such a long time and it feels good to do it again. And that was take three.